this video is going to cover the topic of integers. Be sure the date and topic are at the top of your page. The essential question for this video will be, what vocabulary do we need to describe negative numbers? We've worked a lot this year with whole numbers. Whole numbers are all the counting numbers and the value of zero. Whole numbers are things like one, or five, or 12, or 99. These are all examples of whole numbers. 44 and a half is not a whole number. Whole numbers are also positive. With the exception of zero, all whole numbers are positive. The positive whole numbers that we've used in the past are all to the right of zero on a number line. So these are all our positive numbers. But we can extend the number line in the other direction. Right? We can also move to the left of zero. If we move to the left, these are our negative numbers. To describe these numbers, we need a little bit more vocabulary. The first word we need to know is opposite. Every number has an opposite. These are numbers that are the same distance from zero, but in the opposite direction. Let's take a look at a number line. I'm going to start by putting zero and a few whole numbers on it. Let's just go from zero up to five. I'm then going to extend it to the left with negative numbers, starting with negative one down to negative five. On this number line, we have some opposites. Four is the opposite of negative four. They are both the same number of spaces away from zero, right? Four is one, two, three, four spaces from zero. And negative four is also one, two, three, four spaces away from zero. I could pick another one here, right? Two is the opposite to negative two. Now that we know whole numbers and opposite, we can look at the word integer. All whole numbers and their opposites together are called integers. That means that the number negative four is an integer, but the number five and a half is not because it's not a whole number. Zero is actually an integer, and as a fun little fact, it's the only integer that is neither positive nor negative. Absolute value is a way that we measure the distance of numbers, right, of integers. The absolute value measures the distance a number is from zero. And because it is a distance, it cannot be negative. If we look at our number line here, and we look at the number five, we can know that the absolute value of five is five because it is five spaces away from zero. The absolute value of negative five is also five because it is also one, two, three, four, five spaces away from zero. In fact, all opposites have the same absolute value. We use a very specific symbol for absolute value and it looks like this. It looks like two straight lines. So what that would look like would be Let's say the absolute value of negative nine. Well, that's nine spaces away from zero, so that would be nine. The absolute value of 22 is 22 spaces of zero, so that would be 22. In both cases, regardless of the fact that one integer was negative and one was positive, the absolute value was positive. The last term we have here is rational number. And a rational number is any number that could be written as a ratio, right? Here's the word ratio right in there. You might also think of it as any number that could be written as a fraction. Right? The integer 2 is a rational number because it could be written as 2 divided by 1, 2 over 1. Right? Also, 3 fourths is a rational number because it can be written as a fraction. So all integers are by default rational numbers. 
However, not all rational numbers are integers. So remember, this video was a lot of vocabulary, right? That's all it really was. We wanted to figure out what vocabulary we need to be able to describe working with negative numbers. We saw whole numbers, opposites, integers, absolute value, and rational numbers. We'll be, we'll be applying this vocabulary as we go forward with this material.